Alrighty guys, I'm Orthodon and we are back for My Hero Academia Season 5, Episode 10. So, we are done with the Bakugo fight. It was an amazing fight! I loved it so much. It was so good. It was fast and, like, just seeing Bakugo work together and surprise everyone, I loved it. I loved the teamwork angle and... And I loved how it wasn't just Bakugo. Like, sure, Bakugo had a big hand in them winning, but we also had some awesome plans from uh, some of the other characters. Ugh, damn it. I freaking I hate it because I always really try to remember their names, but, like, Cellophane's name, for some reason, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on. Um, but he had an awesome move with taping the grenade to the part as it was heading back to her. That was really cool. Um... Jiro just with the spotting and, and giving direction and and all that and even uh even Sugar Rush came in and saved Bakugo from being welded you know so, and he was also about to sacrifice himself if Bakugo didn't save everyone you know so so props to him they they all did very good in that fight but now we are moving on to the crown jewel of this arc. <laughs> I, I shouldn't say that because I actually like that last fight, the Bakugo fight, so much that I, I'm not sure if this one's going to stand up to it. But I don't want to judge anything before I've seen it too harshly. So we are going to watch this fight and it, it should be starting this episode. Now, I definitely don't expect it to end this episode. If it ends this episode and like Midoriya pulls out a fast win too... That would be amazing. But just by the nature of it being Midoriya, the main character, I feel like it's going to be, like, dragged out and he's going to be in, like, more peril. So that way when he turns it around, we're going to be like, oh, yeah, go, you know, kind of thing. But anyways, guys, without further ado, let's just watch how this all unfolds, shall we? All right, we're going to start here in five, four, three, two, one, now. Because, uh. I mean, technically, the, the first course should be just about over in the next episode, right? And not next episode, sorry, one more after. Like, 12 is usually the end of the first core. 12 or 13, depending on how many episodes are, are in it. Alright, and we had them talk about their plan. Midoriya is going to be the bait, because he's expecting the other team to go after him, which is what they said they were going to do, so Midoriya is already on top of their plan. I'm excited to see what Shinzo does now that everyone knows what he can do, you know? Because that's, like, the one, like, big downside to his ability. Like, his ability is fantastic, but once everyone knows about it and they can plan ahead knowing they're about to fight him and be like, okay, like, obviously the changing voices really throws a wrench into everything, but how will he work around that? I'm excited to see. And I'm actually excited to see, like, whose powers Monoma copies and how he utilizes them. Because with all the shit he talks, I really hope we see him do something, like, really good. Like, I know he's supposed to be, like, a little bit of comedy relief, you know? But... He talks so much shit, I want to see him pull out, like, something awesome here. So I can be like, alright, I hate this guy, but I gotta admit that was good. Tartarus? Tartarus? Um... What? Really? Right. 
Probably a lot. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh shit. Huh, what? What? That which is inherited. What does that mean? Does he somehow know something's happening to Midoriya? That friggin' ringtone. It's Gran Torino, they were gonna talk about this stuff too. Yeah. Oh, you're starting already. Oh. The time has not yet come. Oh, shit. That's different. So, uh, what is this all building up to? Oh, shit. God damn. Which means maybe the time has, yeah, and maybe it has come now. Shit. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. This guy. <laughs> Jiro. Oh shit. Some kind of telekinesis? Poltergeist? Oh shit. He definitely meant to. He has like clocks on his fingers or something? Wait, can he have, like, his teammate's DNA with him, like a hair or something? And can he touch it when it's separated from their body to activate their quirks? So could he have all three of his teammates' quirks right now? Oh, is that what he has on his fingers? Uh... 
Okay, they are clocks. He's toying with you, man. The Air Force. Yeah, that's true. Good point. Yeah, Phantom Thief. That's a cool name. Right. Yeah, be careful, guys. Oh, oh, damn, that's cool. Nice. Oh, shit. So he has some kind of, like, radar. He can, like, track things. Emily... Is that a reference I don't understand? Okay. Oh, what's this other girl do? Oh, she can shrink stuff. Size. Okay. Doesn't work on living things, alright. Oh, shit. Damn. That's pretty good. She's like a... That's awesome. Oh, shit! Damn, they have a pretty cool combo. I love how both of them just use their quirks. I don't understand what his is yet. Mines. Twin impact. Oh. Interesting. I want to go reread that. I think I get it. But that's interesting. So he... Oh shit! Oh my god, what's happening? What's happening?! What's happening? Whoa, so they can see it. Oh shit! That's not good. They need to like stop this match. Like right now. Oh, shit. Aizawa needs... To, oh, my God. Aizawa needs to get in here. Oh, my God. He's getting, like, dragged around by it. Oh.
Damn. Yeah. Come on, get control of it, Midoriya. Come on, come on. They really should have stopped the match even if he gets control of it, though. Jeez. Oh my god! Uraka! Oh, that time! Stop it! Stupid commercial break! Oh, shit. Sudden backstory means imminent tragic death. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's not gonna die. There's no way. Uh. Aww. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Oh, that's a line. You just gave me chills, Raka. God damn. Yup. Oh, shit. Oh my god. My eyes are like watering because this is like just the chills. Good god. Yeah, I think I think this match is over. Oh. Answer. Oh. Okay. Does that stop his power, though? It's receding back into him. Oh. He's back here. Oh, shit. He's alone, though? Oh! Oh, shit! <clears throat> it's manifested. What did? Oh, shit. Yeah, this is awesome. Huh. Huh. Yeah, he looks badass. Damn. His quirk! Oh my god, we're learning about this! Oh! 
Oh shit. What? Black Whip. Huh. Damn. Oh shit, okay. We learned that too. Ah. Uh. Oh, shit. Damn. Oh, this is so cool. Yeah. Six more quirks. Damn! Complete one for all. Oh my god! <laughs> Did the slap hurt? <laughs> Oh, she's all beat up. I think this... Damn. Oh, Jesus. Oh, he's taking advantage of this moment. Jeez, they're all taking advantage. Alright. Well, shit. Frickin' Monoma, read the room. Oh shit! Alright, we're still on, I guess, for now. Damn! Shit's crazy! Yeah. Nice. What power was that, though? Oh, okay, it was the... I see. Okay, they're here. Hmm, okay. Wow, they're gonna let it go on. Damn. Ah! Ah! I stand by what I said when I said I think Bakugo's fight is the best so far, fight-wise. But this development is crazy! What the hell? Oh my god. What the hell, guys? That was some info drop. <laughs> oh my god. So, I think I think the last episode was the best fight so far of this arc but i think last episode or i mean this episode might have been the best episode if that makes any sense holy shit 
So he's going to get the strength of one for all and a total of seven quirks, if I'm not mistaken. Because he said you're going to get six more of these. I don't think that's counting the one he had. Anyways, guys, that is it for episode 10. My god, what an amazing episode. Holy shit. So, okay, okay. So obviously, I have to talk about what just happened to Midoriya first. I, I can't talk about anything else. So he lost control of his power because he essentially manifested a whole other quirk. And that quirk is more powerful than even the original wielder had. And now, obviously, this is something that we've talked about since the beginning. Like, if if someone passes down, if someone has a quirk that had one for all and passes it down, does that quirk get passed down too? My assumptions were either A, no it didn't, or B, um... It did, but none of the other holders had quirks. They were all quirkless, like what All Might said he was, um, assuming All Might was actually quirkless, and he didn't lie about that. And, uh... And that Midoriya was quirkless, you know? Like, if, if they were all quirkless, then... Then there would be no other quirk to, to pass down. Um, so we've always talked about, like, they made the reference of, like, if, if Todoroki was given one for all, he'd become, like, a superhero, you know, he'd be, like, extremely powerful, um, because they even said back then that, like, one for all would merge with the ice and fire and make it stronger. So, basically, um, so, so I guess... Both of those options were wrong. Te well, I guess technically it does pass down, but it didn't pass down to anybody until Midoriya, because now One for All has grown and cultivated enough power that now the wielder is able to use this. And that guy was saying, like, um, he was saying, you'll be the one to complete One for All. So basically, uh, One for All is an incomplete quirk at the moment. And now that it's grown to this level of power, Midoriya is going to be able to complete it. And like I said, I think there's going to be seven powers in total. But does that make sense? The If there's six more for him to get after this one, assuming that wording is, is what I thought it was, he, he is the ninth holder, right? Which means there's eight others. Um... So if there's six other powers, that means that All Might is very possibly could have been quirkless, right? And I don't. I, the first guy, or the yeah, the the brother, is he counted in the nine? I think he is, right? Because they call him the first holder. I think whenever they said him, so. And he didn't have a quirk that he's going to have to learn. So if you exclude the first guy and All Might, uh, that, that is the six, right? So the other six must be the rest of them. Which means that uh, Nana Shimura had a quirk then? I wonder if All Might knows what it is then. And can, like, prepare Midoriya for it now that, he, now that they know this, you know? Oh, man. I don't know. Either that or Nana Shimura was quirkless and All Might actually had a quirk and lied about it, right? Or I misunderstood it wrong and it's six in total counting that guy we just met, which means it's five, you know? But, damn. Either way, that's crazy. So eventually, not only is Midoriya gonna have the strength of one for all, not only is he gonna be like All Might eventually, when he can use 100% of the power, actually a little bit stronger than All Might, because All Might passed it down, which means the strength grew a little bit. Um, but he's also going to have access to, once again, assuming I have the number right, seven quirks in total that, are, that he's going to be able to just, once he masters all seven of those quirks, that's going to be insane! Like... 
not only did we find out that he's going to be the greatest hero, but now we're really starting to see why he's going to be the greatest hero. He is going to be... How is he going to explain to people how he has seven different quirks within his body, you know, eventually when he's able to use it? Like, I wonder... I wonder how they're going to, like, explain that to people, you know? Even just this one extra power that he didn't know he had. Like, what... What are they going to say? That's that's crazy. But, yeah, and, and like I kind of already said, all, the one for all quirk is going to enhance those quirks, which means they're going to be stronger than what the original wielders could do, too. And the guy mentioned that it's a good thing that it was his first. Now, I don't know if he said that because he's being prideful about his own quirk being good, you know, or is he serious when he says that? Because if he knows there's six others, it's very possible he knows what those six other quirks are. And maybe those other quirks are way more dangerous than what his is. So having Midoriya master this one first, this one might be, like, maybe a little less dangerous. It's more of, like, a capture thing, you know, it's like whips. Um, maybe this would give Midoriya a handle on when these quirks activate and what he needs to do to be able to control them, right? He already got a hint about the whole anger thing. So so maybe that's what he means in saying that it's a good thing that this was the first one. But, but yeah, he mentioned that it was only like a little bit of his spirit that was in here. So did he use up the remnants of his spirit in that world to talk to Midoriya? Like... Will Midoriya ever talk to that same spirit again? Or is that, like, diminished now that he vanished, you know? That'll be interesting to find out, too. Like, I really like the idea of Midoriya being able to converse with these other people, but I hope it's not something that's just limited to, like, um, like one-time short conversations. I'd love to, like, actually, like, him do, like, the, you know, the whole Avatar state, you know, talking to Avatar Roku and, and the different avatars that are you know part of that reincarnation cycle that whole thing was awesome in avatar and it would be awesome here and then that sets up the premise if they are able to talk like on and off all the time then i hate to say it because i don't want it to see it happen but that means all might could die and his spirit could be uh could be fully enveloped in One for All, and Midoriya could talk to All Might still, even though he is gone, you know? And that, if that ever happens, I imagine it, like, has to now. It's, like, the most depressing thing to think about, because even if we still get that connection between Midoriya and All Might in his own head, I'm still gonna miss seeing that character just around the school and stuff, so I, I don't even want to think about that. Um, but... But damn, like, and then we also had a little bit of all for one stuff this episode. He was like moving a little more often than usual and all the guards are like nervous about it, you know, and he said he was having memories from the past and he said he can hear his brother's voice. So is all for one somehow connected to one for all in like a more literal sense, like because the little brother reached out to Midoriya. Did somehow All for One hear that? Like, I wonder what's up with that. There's got to be some kind of connection there. But, damn. That's going to be... Oh, my God. Like, and he seems so confident. Like, I wonder if... I wonder if he has any idea that this could happen to One for All as a quirk. Like, does All for One know? Or... Is that going to be a big surprise eventually somewhere down the line where Midoriya can use 100% of the power and if All for One breaks out and Midoriya has to fight him and Midoriya just whips out seven different quirks all of a sudden fighting him, is he going to be shocked by that or is he going to be like, ah, I see, so you're finally the one to master this power? Because, like, I don't know if, like, I don't know, because, like, the... He originally had the stockpile power, right? And I don't know if, like, he's he did say in the previous season, in one of the previous seasons, that he does need to, like, when he takes a power in, he still needs to learn it and understand it. I was gonna say, like, if he has a quirk, does he just fully understand all of its potential? So maybe when he had the stockpile quirk ability, 
he knew that this was a possibility or something, and he's planned for all of this, but I don't know. Um, they also mentioned that you need to really, like, understand the power and stuff like that, and they, I guess they were kind of unsure when they told the story of, like, we don't know if he was, like, punishing his brother by giving him, like, a useless quirk, you know, of being able to stockpile power, you know, um... Or if he was trying to, like, bend him to his will or whatever. Whatever they said back then. But they, there was nothing, like, definitive. So we don't know if, like, maybe All for One knew that his brother had the passed down quirk. And maybe he somehow knew that, you know, maybe I'm giving All for One a little too much credit. We know he's, like, genius in, in coming up with all these plans. But is it possible he knows, like, all of this could have happened and led up to this moment? Or something, and maybe, like, like, what if he manages to steal one for all back? Like, could that have been his plan of, like, wait for it to become the ultimate power and then take it back for himself, you know? Or, I don't know. But, yeah, that's interesting. Um, I don't know how that's all gonna be connected with him wiggling in his cell like that, talking about the memories and saying his little, he hears his little brother's voice. That's, that's crazy. Um, man, I, like, don't even want to talk about the fight, but, uh, I, I also really loved, guys, I really loved how, even in this, like, heat of a battle, Shinso was still able to, like, be like, okay, I'll, I'll help you guys out by brainwashing him to get him under control, rather than just thinking about winning, you know, I think that's, like, a... An awesome thing. And it shows, like, the difference between Monoma, right? Where Monoma sees that Midoriya was struggling and, and stuff like that. And instead of, instead of like, trying to help the situation, he just kind of jumped in for the attack, you know? It's, uh, it's interesting. And, I mean, I know he's still trying to win this, and I, and I get that, but... But, yeah, I don't know. Um, anyway, I actually jumped right to this point where I wanted to read... Twin Impact. Okay, so he can create a second impact at his discretion at any place he's already hit once. The second impact has many times the power of the initial impact. So, the only thing I'm confused about this is he used that ability on all of the objects that, um, that the other girl, hero named Emily, I didn't catch the rest of the name, used her poltergeist on to make them, like, fly around, right? Um, and then the other girl made them smaller and stuff. So, if it was her ability making those items fly around, and his ability made them impact a second time after, but they have to impact a first time for that to work. So how is that considered, like, his, like, him? Like, like, the, the little subtitles say that, um, uh, what was the first line? He can create a second impact at his discretion at any place he has already hit once. So, how is, how is those objects hitting things considered him hitting once? That's what I'm a little confused on. Unless, like... He hit those objects before she made them float. And then... He can... Oh, wait. Maybe I read that wrong. He can create a second impact at his discretion at any place he's already hit once. I don't know. I thought maybe I read that wrong for a second there. He can create a second impact at his discretion. I understand that. At any place he's already hit once. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, like, how him hitting once had already happened to fill that condition for him to use the, the power. Um, can I see the power in action again, actually? Um, so we see her size thing. I like how her power is very similar to uh, Uraraka's, too. Except she makes things different sizes, whereas Uraraka makes things float. But either way, they can both, like, touch it, make it do something, disconnect from their body, combine their hands, and, uh, and release the power. It's very, very similar. 
Um, okay, so Uraraka, all the items get bigger. Uraraka makes them all float, which is cool. And then he says twin impact fire, and they all blast. I guess I'm a little confused by that. How are all those pieces hitting something that he's already impacted? I guess I don't know. They don't really go into any more detail than that, but anyway. Yeah, that was... That was a crazy-ass episode, guys. Like, and not only that, like... We also had, like, the conversation between Monomo, which was interesting. I took it kind of evilly, but I don't think it was meant to be taken evilly. I kind of want to listen to that convo again. Um, he was talking about how, like... You know, they're... They're the same, him and Shinso. When they were younger, people told them that they... That his court couldn't be used to be a hero... And stuff like that. But then he, like, went on about some other stuff that felt a little, like, maybe sketchy. Um, let's see. Where was that? How did you get him to talk? Okay. I can start here, I think. So I insulted his classmate. In order to become heroes, we must always act like heroes. Right, that makes sense. If we don't, then we won't be able to win against power that can do anything. Hmm. Like we're similar, but not exactly the same as what we admire. Don't you ever feel like that? Your hopes and dreams from when you were young slowly become a burden. Hmm. Like a curse. Yeah, I don't know what he's trying to say there. Like, I understand it. He's talking about, like, the, you know, the, the hopes and dreams becoming a burden. I understand what he's saying, but, like, what is he implying there? Is he implying that, like... When he was younger, he wanted to become a hero, and because of those hopes and dreams, he's still trying to become a hero, even though he feels like he, like, doesn't want to now. Like, he's cursed to becoming a hero. It almost sounded, like, villainy, what he was saying. Like, how he just, like, he doesn't want to do this, but he's he's doing it because of what he wanted to be when he was younger. I feel like maybe I'm, like, misunderstanding something there because I don't want to believe that Monoma is, like, a bad guy. I think he's a little neurotic and everything, but I think he's a good guy that wants to become a hero, but from that it kind of sounded like he wanted to become a hero just to satisfy his his younger urges, you know? But I don't know, maybe I misunderstood, guys. Um, maybe when I... Maybe when I watch a reaction to it, maybe listening to some of these other guys. Like, I watched Semblance of Sanity's reaction in a couple days. It'll come out um, from a couple days from when I recorded this, anyway. Not from when I released it. Um, and they usually have, like, really good insight to, like, character philosophy and stuff like that. So maybe maybe I'll be able to watch that and, and get a different perspective. But, but I don't know. It, his little convo didn't really, like, grab me there. I wasn't quite sure what he was saying. I apologize if, if it's, like, super obvious and I'm just dumb, but, but yeah. Um, anyway. Man. That was an amazing episode, guys. I can't even express it. Like, I don't have much more to say regarding it, but that was just, that had me on the edge of my seat. I felt like I just had my mouth open for, like, half the episode. And, like, I, I don't know. Um, I, I can't wait to see where this goes, like, I, I'm wondering, like, will Midoriya be able to try to use that power in this fight, or will he try to just stay calm and use the power the normal way, you know? Like, I wonder how this is gonna go, like, maybe there will be a badass moment when Midoriya manages to use this, this new power now that he has the tip to, to stay calm and stuff, but... But he's definitely got some training to do. Um, I wonder how, like, these... Now that this has happened, I wonder how these other episodes are going to go. Like, I think it's very possible that the fight could end in the next episode. 
and then we could have maybe one more episode of concluding all of this up and maybe like having a talk with All Might and everything with Midori and his power and what's going on and what he saw and everything and then maybe move into another arc or I wonder what like the next arc is going to be like we had hints of all for one like wiggling and they they definitely made it ominous like oh we need to like quickly have this guy be sentenced you know and and stuff like that like like it almost felt like they were amping up to a a breakout for all for one soon but i don't know um but yeah it's uh i don't know i don't know where the rest of the season is going to go but i am super excited for everything to come the, the yeah last episode was amazing this one was amazing I, I feel like we're gonna be getting into some really good stuff from from here on out for the rest of the season but yeah guys that's gonna be it for me thank you so much for watching make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed it's a great way to support me for free um also hitting the like button and commenting and all that good stuff is is very much appreciative um also check out my patreon if you want to get access to some of my other shows like early access and and uh, my Patreon exclusives and stuff like that. If you just want to support me financially, you can do so on there. The link should be popping up on the screen. I very much appreciate it if you choose to. Uh, and the link in the description as well if you don't click it on the screen. Um, or you can just go to patreon.com slash morthodon. So yeah, guys, thank you so much, and I will see you in my future reactions. Bye-bye.